Boom. What's up, guys? We are live. We got Mateo from Attraction Japan joining us. This is a live stream that you guys had requested. So here it is. Let's start off by playing our lovely trailer to get everyone pumped up. How do you feel about big dicks? <laughs> <laughs> We got Sarah J on the casting couch. Yes. She's never done this before. <laughs> you are not to have sex with other girls, but she's not. Fuck that shit. What are some of the biggest mistakes you've heard in this Shoulder fuckers. I love that trailer. All right, so <laughs> uh, let's start off with a little introduction. Uh, tell all the guys a little bit about yourself and what you do. What up, everybody? Yeah, I'm Mateo. Uh, Traction Japan is my my channel, my site. And uh, basically, I've just been uh, out here in Japan about 10, 11 years, um, just gaming, living life. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into more later, but I think that's good for now. All right, cool. Like, what made you pick Japan? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it, in the U.S., everybody has to pick a foreign language. And um, my the way my middle school was, if I picked Japanese, I, I could go to the high school and uh, learn there. So seemed it seemed uh seemed like a good move and uh yeah i enjoy it okay cool so you basically you took uh what you took japanese uh <clears throat> japanese and then you were like after high school you're like fuck it let me go to japan and bang some japanese chicks yeah basically yeah <laughs> um yeah that's basically it so uh yeah you know originally like obviously i was like in middle school at the time so i did like anime and or it was you know pokemon everything was all all big then um but I don't really watch any anime anymore that much. Um, not really interested in that that much anymore. So uh, my taste changed, but I still, you know, I still like Japan a lot. So yeah, that's why oh. I'm out here. Plus, okay. you know, I mean, I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you about the state of um, American women and, and and all that. So yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, how does it work with the citizenship aspect? Like, how do you get to like? Did you get like a work visa, or how are you able to stay there for so long? Yeah, just just work visas, regular work visas. So it's pretty. It's not that hard. You just have to. I mean, you do generally have to graduate from university, but other than that, it's not too not too hard to get out here and stay out here. Okay, so if you're like a U.S. citizen, you want to like stay in Japan indefinitely. It's not that hard to do. Yeah, you do need either a student visa or a working visa, but yeah, it's okay, definitely doable. All right, so let's let's get into uh you know uh game in Asia. So what would you say are the uh and you know I have my own take on that. I've never been to Japan, but I have hooked up with my fair share of Asian girls. Um, but so what would you say are like what's different about game in Japan? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of things that are different. There's a lot of like small kind of cultural things that are quite different, like you know, various minor examples. Like one example is like I wouldn't really make out with a girl in a club, for example. Um, it just like you know, they, they it, it breaks all the tension and they they end up like not really needing to leave it with oh. you or wanting to leave with you. Um, whereas in other countries, I would, you know, I would do that, get them like kind of hot and then take them out. Right. So there's a lot of like kind of small cultural differences in the way that you would game as well. Um, and it's interesting you say Asia as well, because I find like a lot of differences in, you know, between Asian countries. And Japan is pretty, pretty unique in the sense that it's not like a lot of other Asian countries that people go to, like, you know, Thailand or the Philippines, uh, purely because of like the social economic status. Right. So in those in the Southeast Asian countries, you know, you, you showing up as a foreigner, you pretty much already have some status status as like, you know, you probably have some cash. You know, you, you you're, you're able to provide for merch. You represent a potential ticket out of her current life right so there's that appeal for a lot of the girls in in southeast asian countries right whereas in japan um it's quite different like it's it's on on par economically with you know the us or other first world countries so wow. there's not, there's not that automatic kind of boost to you know your appeal just because you show up as a foreigner and interestingly as well like a lot of guys who came to japan are you know were either like nerds into anime or you know english teachers or something like that so weirdly enough the image of foreigners in japan actually is not that high right oh. so it used, be, it used to be more like in the 80s or something but basically do the, the the same level uh economic social economic class plus um kind of like an influx of like not that cool foreigners to for lack of a better way of putting it um has made it so that foreigners as in general are not like a hot brand 
right in japan so you do need you definitely do need um cultural awareness and and have have game it's not like you just show up and get laid like in in manila or something right all right, so many things I want to follow up on that. So I guess let me start with this. So if that's the case, what made you choose Japan out of like the other Asian countries like Thailand or Philippines or whatever? Like what made you go with Japan? I mean, I've been to I, I do travel to those countries. I, I do like it, you know, for for what it is. And it's fun for like, you know, a, a little romp or something. Um, places like, you know, Jakarta is amazing. Jakarta is, you know, crazy. Indonesia is great. Um, I've, I've been all around because, you know, I'm, I'm based out here. So it's quite easy to get over there. But in terms of Japan, like the initial reason was just the, that I had studied the language and that I've studied abroad here. And then, um, you know, I just like the fact that it's like it's clean, it's nice, uh -huh. everything works like it's supposed to. People are not like shitty and rude and not trying to uh -huh. berate you with their, you know, veganness or whatever it might be. Right? They're they're just and the women are cool with just being feminine and and you know either they're gonna you know they're gonna come with you or they're not, but they're not gonna like try to like battle you or like. You know, it, it's it's a different kind of vibe. It's you know, women are much more comfortable just being feminine and you know, being being how they're kind of supposed to be or how they how how you know they want to express themselves. They have no problem with that. They have no hangups here. So that's kind of the main reason. Um, and then yeah, like I mentioned, the the fact that it is like kind of a first world country. So um, it's clean. Everything works well. You know, there's public transportation, taxis. Everything's nice. You're not going to get you know robbed or scammed or anything like that. Let me rephrase the question. So I totally understand why someone would pick uh, living in Asia over the U.S., right? I totally get that. I mean, more specifically, like, why? And I guess you gave one reason about how it's, like, cleaner and more modern. But, like, why pick, I guess, uh, Japan over, like, Thailand or over Korea? Like, I was just curious more specifically because I'm sure all those countries, the women are feminine, right? So what specifically makes, like, the Japanese girls better than the Thai girls or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have spent time in Thailand, like sort of lived on and off for like a month in Thailand. And um, it is nice. It is nice. Um, I just find in warm weather countries where the, 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 the living is a little too easy, I tend to not do anything. <laughs> I just like, oh. you know, I just kind of. So a lot of it was like personal reasons, sounds like, right? Yeah, but also I'm just, um, you know, I've, I've like I said, I do travel to those places, but just personally for like living and for the overall like quality of women, I find it's it's better in Japan, the way they dress like Thailand, you, you know, for example, it's just to pick an example in Thailand, you know, you get a lot of girls just like wearing flats or flip flops, like because the street is just fucked up. Basically, you can't really walk in heels all that well. Right. Um, you know, the fashion is just not quite as good They're I don't really like the Thai English accent like. You know, they, they sound a bit, um, I don't know, it's a bit grating for me. It's fine, you know, for a while, for a visit or um, whatever. But for me, for living, uh, Japan was was the move, yeah. Okay. So what I heard about Japan, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that in Japan, there's like uh, special clubs that are basically designed for Japanese girls to meet like foreigners, right? So it's like special clubs where like, like if you go to like a regular Japanese club, a lot of chicks might not look your way. But if you go to one of these special clubs that were basically, you know, Japanese girls to meet foreigners, it's like game on easy mode. Is that true? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's a few areas. There were some clubs like that. Um, now it's a little bit different, right? I mean, there, there are parties, there are international parties, which is like basically like that you get Japanese girls mostly and foreign guys, and they go there with the intention of meeting a foreign guy. So there's parties or events that are like that in terms of full on clubs, I guess the closest you could get would be like, um, like hip hop clubs over here. Um, you know, something like that, a hip hop club, but it's not exactly that explicit right but there is definitely a higher prevalence of foreigners mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so it's not like super duper obvious but that's like the underlying theme basically of like a certain club or something yeah 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 there's clubs that are like definitely like there's clubs that are i'll put it another way there's clubs that are definitely japanese and you know you're, you're in there and like you're like damn this is like a <laughs> it's like a different it is like a different country you know and the, and the way everybody operates the way like it's almost like the girl, like she she can't really be seen by other Japanese guys talking to a foreigner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Or if it is, it's got to be brief and you know sneaky. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah sort of yeah. like if you like if you like like fat chicks or something, you know, you, you, it's like it's like fucking a fat girl or something, like getting getting with a foreigner, right? In some yeah. in some places, right? Like it's a bit extreme, but it can okay. be, be a bit like that. Yeah, what I heard about Korea is that there's like literally clubs and bars where they won't let white people or just anyone who's not Korean in. Like they'll just literally say, 
no white people. Like, they, like you know, like in America, like not like they, they might make an excuse of like, oh, sorry, we're at capacity. Like in Korea, yeah, yeah, yeah. no more white people. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like this yeah, sure. that happened in Japan or no? There used to be signs like for specific, you know, like no like Iranians or whatever. There used to be like signs for specific nationalities. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really like that anymore. There's just like everything's quite subtle and understated here. So, you know, the, it's more like, you know, you walk into the wrong scene and pe people are just kind of like they, they'll tolerate you, but they're not going to really make it easy for you. Mm, OK, um, so OK, so let's get into this. So what would you say are the big differences when it comes to hooking up with Japanese girls, like something that's, you know, like uh, different than normal game in the U.S. or in Europe or something like that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know about girls, the, the, specifically if this is about girls, but in terms of the layout of, of the major cities, it's 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 incredible, basically, like the amount of volume of, of beautiful girls just walking around, um, even in the middle of, of a, all the, the highest peak of the COVID scare and everything like there was just girls constantly out so you never had a loss of meeting you know a beautiful woman which is that's to me that's like the the best biggest advantage i can just walk outside i can walk to the store and you know pick up some eggs and milk and, and a beautiful girl so uh sure. you know within five minutes from you know any any major station basically so that's kind of the, the biggest uh benefit i would say but to be fair, like, uh, for example, I live in Miami, and Miami is exactly mm -hmm. like that, too. Like, I was just at Whole Foods before this. I saw, like, five or ten hotties, right? So I understand, mm -hmm. like, the reputation the U.S. has that, like, you know, there's a lot of fat chicks. And that's true, but in major cities like Miami or L.A., like, you just see nonstop hotties, right? So I guess, like, more specifically, like, focused mm -hmm. on, like, the chat, like, what would, what would make – I guess let's compare it to, like, Europe, right, Eastern Europe. Like, what would make – you know, what would you have to – okay, let me rephrase the question. Like, let's say your little brother who was coming to visit you, uh, and he was like, hey, what do I need to know specifically about Japanese girls to be successful here? So I guess one of the biggest ones would – for me, that, that took me time and takes guys that I teach time um, to kind of wrap their head around is that you, you, you kind of want to just – when you talk to a girl, you want to just, like, start walking in a direction that you want to go, like, towards your house, basically – um, you don't want to like you don't want to like open and you'd be like, yeah, let's go to my place and chill or I got these, you know, I got a guitar. You know, you don't want to like come up with some reason necessarily. Um, you do want to just kind of like start the process of walking in the direction you want to walk. Um, so I, I try to keep things very, very vague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to keep things very vague, like, hey, let's just like let's get a drink or something and not even specify alcohol or tea or anything. Right. Um, and then just kind of start walking, start leading basically directly back to my place. Um, I won't stop at any venue. So I'm pretty much always pulling just directly from the street home um, without any stops anywhere. Maybe sometimes I'll stop at a convenience store, uh, you know, to get a to get coffee or whatever it might be or, or an alcohol or whatever. So, yeah, I, I would say like the context, it's a it's a pretty high context society. So girls are good at kind of putting things together without you explicitly saying it. And, you know, they're, they're kind of happy to like under into it and follow along with you so that's pretty cool in a lot of ways but it does take some getting used to because you know a lot of guys want to lay things out very clearly and be like you know hey let's do this so, so that's that's kind of one of the biggest i think differences mm -hmm. yeah i mean so this kind of goes kind of goes to the slut shaming culture which is i think is so prevalent in asian countries so yeah totally i mean i've known that like you know with uh, asian girls i've hooked up with right like being explicit is not a good idea because they'll just they'll be like they'll just feel like inner sense of shame like the slut shaming in asian countries is like so much stronger than like uh western countries so like you do have to be very like under the radar and like you can never be like oh let's you know let's go back to my place and hook up like instant deal breaker right you always have to be like hey you know we'll just go over here and have a little drink all right and you always have to like you know it always has to be implied it can't ever be like explicit so that's kind of what you're speaking about right yeah yeah exactly yeah and the same goes for like like sexual talk or anything like that. Yeah. Usually it'll, it'll mess you up more than it helps you. So one, yeah. One of the big thing I've noticed is that uh, with Asian chicks, you never want to like sex, be sexual over text. Uh, Cause yeah. that they'll, they'll just bail. Like as soon yeah. as you say something that's like explicitly sexual, like uh, Netflix and chill, even that, like that's, that's too much. Like it all has to be like under the radar. Um, is that your observation as well? That like just being sexual over text in Japan is like a big no, no. 
Yeah, 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 absolutely. Even even to the point where like it's just seen as like not not classy, right? Like it's like not a classy thing to do really just to like get sexy over over text. So yeah, absolutely. It's like it's definitely ruined a, a lot of uh, interactions when I first was coming out here and, and learning how things worked. Yeah, like one other thing I've noticed is that like, for example, in the US, like if on Tinder, you're like, what are you looking for on here? You know, you can get some honest answers. Like some chicks will be like, just have fun. In like Asian countries or Asian chicks, you say, what are you looking for? They will always say friends. Like you will mm -hmm. never get like, oh, I want to have some fun or casual sex. Like I've never seen a girl say that. It's always just friends. Like even if the chick is super DTF, like sucking your dick within five minutes, she'll still say just friends. Like have you kind of observed yeah. that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the and the weird the weird flip side as well of that is that girls are not really going to hang out with you if they are only interested in friends. I feel I almost yeah. feel like friends doesn't really exist like in a in a in a, in in a big I, I, yeah, in a big city especially like Tokyo. I'm I'm sure in the countryside or something could be, but or if you if your personality is just like really really like, you know, beta or whatever, you know, it I, I just don't feel like the, the friend zone really exists. I feel like a girls are not even trying to hang out with you if they're not at least considering sleeping with you. Mm. Another thing I've noticed about Asian girls, and this is something that <clears throat> I have like mixed feelings on. I'm not really a fan. This is one of the reasons I don't go for like super fob Asian girls is that when you're escalating and maybe Japan, I think Japan might be different. So correct me, tell me on that. But you have to like be like super duper persistent when you're escalating like to the point where it just becomes like, like, just like almost like too much where you feel like you're just sexually harassing the girl because like the first 20 times she will just say no but not even because she wants to because she feels like she has to and she feels right. like if she doesn't say no 20 times that you're gonna think she's easy so she might want to bang you but she feels like she has to like play this game where she says no 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 for like 20 million times but she really still wants to like bang you like i literally i remember this one uh i think this was a filipina chick i had over and like She's literally like on my bed, half naked, and still saying, I think we should just be friends while like jerking me off. It's like, it just like makes no sense. I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll be just friends. Like, all right, suck my dick. Like, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. Like, is, have you, you, you see what I'm talking about? Like, with the persistence of escalation? Sorry, kind of broke up. I didn't hear that. Say that again. Oh, I, I didn't actually say anything. Was, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't actually say anything. But yeah, okay. the, the internet is being a little weird. Okay, yeah. So, okay. So, uh, so okay. So, what are some other things? I want to really, like, get into the details. What are some other things that you think are, like, big, important things to know when it comes to gaming Japanese girls? Hmm. Like, what would you say? We kind of covered, uh, we covered uh, the uh, not being explicit. We covered... Um, the friend zone thing, we covered escalation. So what would you say are some of the other ones? Can you hear me? Or are you like writing in the private chat? Or maybe you're like writing to me on WhatsApp? Yo, can you hear me, bro? I think we uh, lost Matthias. Let me check my WhatsApp to see if he's writing me. Oh. Oh, yeah, hey, sorry about that. I don't know. I I think I think you lost me for a while. We lost each other for a while. But so what I was saying is, um, so I want to really like narrow down the details. So we covered, uh, we covered uh, being explicit. We covered pulling. Uh, what are like some of the yeah. other things that are like specific to gaming Japanese and Asian girls? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I did mention this at the beginning as well. Um, there is that sort of like there is this sort of it's almost like it can be a dirty little secret thing for some girls like there are definitely girls who go after explicitly go after foreigners mm. um, and those usually fall into like a couple types either they were just not that desirable to their own to the their their own guys the japanese guys right um and then they you know maybe they had something like a big a big ass growing up and you know the oh. japanese guy you know it's not like valued in 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 japanese culture so much things are changing a little bit like i'll take um, all the big but, japanese girls if the japanese guys don't want them yeah 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 that's how i feel too so but a lot of those girls they don't get like the you know the interest the affection they need um or you know other other characteristics as well that happens to be a good one but there might be other characteristics as well where you know it might not be the most attractive thing at least according to the beauty standards you know in japan 
So they tend to look for other places where they could get affection, aka foreign guys, right? So there's that kind of demographic. Um, either less attractive or less attractive according to Japan's, you know, standards, Asian beauty standards. Um, it's up to, you know, whatever, who, not, not, not saying you shouldn't like that or don't like that, but just saying in terms of the, the totem pole in Japan, uh, those kind of girls are a little bit lower. So they find attention with, by, you know, around foreigners. That's fast. Uh, the other demographic is like higher, higher educated girls either from like a richer background or you know just have been to university and those are the, t the types who can study and do study english right a lot of the more beautiful girls will just not even go to university right because they'll get nightlife jobs or they'll 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 live they'll get by on their beauty right so they because they're getting by on their beauty they don't need to spend the time to learn another language so they don't even develop any interest in foreigners at all really uh, if a foreigner comes along at the right time the right moment in the right way yeah they, they might go for it but a lot of the more beautiful girls just just by selection they you know they don't need to get by like it's kind of like you know i'm sure it's it's kind of the same in in the u.s you know if it's a, if it's a girl she's beautiful she can just do only fans or something she doesn't have to go to college or anything like that so you know they can kind of support themselves if they're beautiful so it doesn't it you know they don't need to get that education that would uh lend them to learn english and be interested in foreigners right so that's kind of like a demographic thing that um that I, that I find interesting here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, one, one of my biggest uh, little weird kinks is I love uh, big titty uh, Japanese girls, like a Japanese girl with huge tits, which is like a unicorn, right? Because you don't see that often. But uh, how like, is that something like our big tits, something that are like, is it a good thing or a bad thing for a Japanese girl in terms of this uh, beauty hierarchy? Yeah, big tits are definitely valued, like highly, highly valued. Oh, in, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just the ass for some reason. I don't know, like, I don't know why. They, they make them top heavy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got it. Yeah. I think, like, if these uh, Japanese dudes, they just saw some big booty Latinas, they would change their mind. Just uh, once yeah, you yeah, yeah. a big booty in your face, you, you can't go back. <laughs> you can't go back on that. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Another thing that I was thinking so the, even like the communication in Japan, like, they use this app called Line, right? That's like mm -hmm. the big app there. Yep. Okay, so like even like so, I guess like if you're traveling to Japan, like if you're trying to get a girl's WhatsApp, like that might not even work. You have to get her line, or how does that work? Yeah, I don't think I think most girls don't have, uh, yeah, don't don't even have WhatsApp. I'll be honest, like I don't even use WhatsApp. Uh, I barely use it. You know, I had to like it's either you know it's, it's Line or, or Telegram or Signal for me for the most part. So, um, yeah, so they definitely yeah you you definitely do have to get on board with Line or or Instagram. Yeah. yeah, I think these are the kind of like weird cultural things that are really important to know. Because if you go to like you go to Japan, you don't know much, and you're like, "Hey, can I get your WhatsApp?" The girl's like, "What is that?" Um, okay, let me ask you about the language barrier. Like, how good is the English there? Do you need to know a little bit of Japanese, or it doesn't matter? Yeah, it's like it definitely helps to learn Japanese. Um, you know, I think with the literacy here is pretty low. Actually, it's like lower than certainly lower than the Philippines. Everybody speaks English in the Philippines. Uh, but a lot of these smaller, you know, a lot of other Asian countries have pretty high literacy for English, but in Japan, it's, it's quite low. So it is what it is. Um, I think you can get along. You can get on with 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 relatively little to no Japanese, um, uh, but it, it does help for sure to have, to have some. When you say, uh, OK, let, let me get your overall opinion. So when you say uh, it's like if you're like, a let's say a white guy, it's easier harder or neutral in japan because i can tell you for example as a white guy in latin america it's a lot easier than it is in america mm -hmm. in uh eastern europe it's a lot easier so uh, in thailand it's a lot easier where would japan rank is it i've heard people say it's easier but uh there's a few people who say it's harder so i want to get your perspective yeah it's weird i think it's easier to get um average or slightly below average girls but it's harder to get like the high the high level girls yeah right. um if you're like the, the guys that have the easiest kind of time who are coming from abroad are asian right so asian looking guys actually do usually have the ability to get the, like the highest tier girls i've heard a little that. bit easier yeah i've heard that uh yeah. one interesting thing well actually yeah okay we can just crack into it now i'm fascinated by the japanese porn industry because uh 
it's different than pretty much every other porn industry, uh, like the European or the Latin American or the American one, uh, in the sense that they really just want to see Asian guys fuck chicks. Like they don't want to see a white guy or a black guy fucking an Asian girl. Uh, most of them just want to have Asian looking guys. And so there's a there's a really apparently there's a really high demand for Asian men to be porn stars. Like mm. they want like Asian guys because there's there's like two thousand chicks and like one hundred and fifty male porn stars. But like white guys, black guys, you know, Latin guys won't qualify. It has to be an Asian guy. Do you have any insight on the, like the Japanese porn industry? Yeah, I've, I've heard that same thing. Uh, I've heard that yeah, they're low on low on male actors. Um, my 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 girlfriend is actually a, a porn actress as well. So, oh, yeah, it's it's interesting like hearing her her side of things. But yeah, you're right. It is basically all asian dudes for the most part there's not like much like interracial interracial isn't really like a big category um i don't really like pay too much attention to it but yeah it, i haven't heard the same thing about the the lack of male actors what's what's her side of it i'm curious like what are the what are the things that she tells you uh i mean like yeah for the most part we're, we we like we don't I don't I don't really like dig so deep into it but it is interesting just hearing like you know I'll ask her like what kind of scenes she's done and she said one of the one of the funniest scenes was like that she was just getting tickled and like like the tickling the tickling was like her whole like she orgasmed from the tickling and like that was the whole scene so it was pretty interesting she has ones where she goes into like the farm and is like picking like you know carrots and radishes and then somehow like it ends up in sex like <laughs> so the scenes are pretty funny yeah Oh man, I want to watch the carrot picking one. Uh, the least yeah. sense. How did you guys meet? How did you meet her? Uh, I met her. I met her in a club actually at a at a techno event, like an underground techno club. Yeah. Give us give us like the story. Like, did you pull her the same night? Was a number close? Um, yeah, I did actually. So she so the DJ had invited her. Well, like pretty 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 big uh, big four underground techno DJ in Japan um, had invited her, and she was kind of like just lingering around, kind of watching, just like chilling and like pretty like very very mellow so i just like went up to her and was talking to her i was actually like slightly tripping so as well at the time so i was like i was like not in the most um i don't know lucid of states but yeah so i i did um i talked to her a bit and like i kept kind of circling back around she wouldn't really give me much but she, she was responsive but not very you know not very contributing a lot to the conversation so i was kind of do my own thing and then come back and talked to her and then as the club was ending i was like yo let's go and she was like nah i'm here for the dj i'm waiting for the dj the guy comes out and says hi to her but then he goes back to the back room and like it's like the clubs the lights are on they're trying to usher everybody out they're like let's let's go you know let's go uh, eventually she's just like all right all right let's go and I, I brought her back and yeah i hooked up with that first day so um but yeah it was it was interesting i guess like if the if if the, if the guy that she was there like to see had had been a little faster with his uh, faster with meeting her or you know securing her or whatever then it wouldn't have gone down but the cards uh they fell that they fell my way that day so yeah it's just funny how often like there's a huge element of luck involved with this stuff we're just like right. and just like factors have to line up uh let me ask you yeah. this question kind of unrelated but like how does it work with her being in the porn industry like does that bother you at all or you don't care or i don't really care i mean um like i'm obviously not gonna like expect anything like i don't, I don't really expect anything from her um mm -hmm. so i actually have like two kind of main girls and one is that's one and then the other is like the polar opposite very very sweet very like innocent uh you know like the porn star is extremely curvy right mm -hmm. hourglass figure you know big tits and everything and then the other girl is like very petite very very small um very like sweet and like comes over and cleans everything and helps me out and like cooks me food and very wow. doting and very very um very sweet so they're they're basically polar opposites and wow. like i like that because it's just like you know it's like if you go to uh you know an onsen if you go to hot spring or something you get in the cold bath and you get in the hot right, right, right. It's like the contrast is is what's nice right so people wow. are always like people often ask me they're like yeah what kind of girl do you like and i'm always like the one that i didn't have last night right <laughs> so it's like wow. the, the contrast is what's what's good right how do you mostly do you mostly do uh like date game night game dating apps like how do you mostly meet chicks yeah i mean i so street day game essentially on the street was was what i mainly did for uh you know maybe nine years or so and then more recently i i started living in this big house basically what happened is uh corona hit and my friend had um airbnbs all over japan and they basically vacated 
they all they all were empty so we had he had a huge house in like a really downtown area and he was like yo do you guys want to come just live in it while we're you know while there's no you know there's no airbnb and we were like okay yeah let's do it so me and a couple like really really savage guys really good at, at just street game day game we we all just lived together and it was it was it was a crazy about a year and a half um that we were living there and so that was like more like building an ecosystem that was really cool to see because we we would have girls who would live with us for a while and initially they would be like they would be so helpful they would like you know when new girls come over like sometimes the girl would like stop at the door as we were pulling her from the street like because the, the house is maybe like a five minute walk from like a major major crowded area so the girl, the new girl would be like hesitant. She'd look at the house. She'd look at the door. She'd be like, I don't know if I'm going to come in. She'd be standing in the street. I'd like text one of the girls that we're living in. Yo, come outside right now. And the girl would come running down and be like, hey, it's okay. Come in, have a drink, right? And like bring, help me bring the girl in. And it was great. It was great. Um, it was great living with the girls. I will say though that like, you know, we weren't asking them for, you know, to pay anything. Everything was good. Like at the beginning, they were cleaning everything. They were helping us, you know, hook up with other girls. And then over time, that sort of started to change. Like they sort of started to take everything for granted um, and basically stopped, you know, started getting a little bit more jealous. They had what we call like the old toy syndrome, sort of like, uh, you know, Toy Story or something where they're like, damn, the, the guys, they're not playing with me anymore. They're always looking at the new girls. Right. So they started to feel a little bit you know take things a little personally and like not be quite so helpful and then stop kind of helping around out around the house so we sort of had to uh, kick, kick kick them out when they got to that level and replace them with with new more helpful humans uh, were you guys just all like just banging the chicks in the house like it was it or is it like yeah. one person was banging this chick one, or is it just like a free-for-all when it comes to banging yeah, it was it was it was a free for all. Like I would say, the ones that lived, like it, pretty much everybody hooked up with them. But then, like people would sort of either stop, or some people would like one girl more and see her more, or like you know, so sort of naturally developed. Either you know, everybody basically hooked up with everybody at the beginning, uh, but then over time, either like you know, I would like not really want to hook up with that girl that much, and I'd be more interested in new chicks, or like there'd be another girl that I did want to see, and I would, we would like stay like sleep over in each other's rooms all the time. So it was kind of like a, a fluid situation, but feelings definitely did arise and, you know, obeyed, uh, wax and wane as they, as they did. But the craziest thing was just like, yeah, living together. We even had like a, a maid cause, um, none of us are very, you know, we're not like super into cleaning. Right. So we had this maid who would just come around and she would wear just a t-shirt with like underwear and like, just clean like the whole little house and. And we would, yeah, we would all just smash her too as well. So, like, <laughs> how did awesome. you go, how did you guys meet the maid? The maid was just street approach, man, cold approach. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you're like, you like, okay, so you meet this chick and you like bang her, and then you're like, hey, you want to be the maid for our house? Yeah, yeah, basically, basically, yeah. We'd That's be like, awesome. look, we, we don't really like cleaning. This is a massive house. It's hard for you know, it's hard. We we were having people over all the time. You know, pretty much every day there'd be like between, I don't know, four six girls coming over uh we would all like drink and then smash and then go out sometimes to a club or something and then come back after the club so that you know as you can imagine it gets it gets dirty fast um because all these people who are guests like they're not really gonna um clean that much so we did need a maid and and uh, so yeah we were paying her but she would just she would like we no we actually didn't even tell her to to walk around in her underwear she just took it upon herself and started <laughs> walking around in her underwear and and cleaning everything and yeah that was that was a good time as well yeah, I mean, it sounds like a porno. Like, there's just like a bunch of big titty, submissive Japanese girls walking around. Mm -hmm. and you just like walk over. You don't even say anything. You just start banging them. <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. I have, some, I have some pretty funny videos where it's like I, I take a video and I was just like walk through the entire house and like each room there would just be like naked people just passed out everywhere. It was pretty surreal. Um, yeah, but unfortunately that that like that ended up that ended basically countries opening it back up. So I'm living I'm living in my own place now. But you know it's kind of it's it's back to normal basically. But it was it's almost like a fever dream or something. That's a, a really a really good way to uh, pass the pandemic. Uh, yeah. Do you ever fuck with dating apps? Um, I tried, you know, I tried a few times, but I've never found it to be like, you know, it, it never got me better results than just going outside and talking to somebody. Uh, um, I always would end up like the girls who I would get out would just either be slightly weird or slightly less attractive than the girl that I could get out from just walking outside for an hour or two. Uh, so okay so can you run me through your general like uh street game approach like how how like what's your like overall strategy like just run me through the whole thing um 
Yeah, so just like walk along with them for the most part. Most well, of the like, time. Let's start off like way before that, like with the opener, like and just from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So usually it's moving like it's a busy, busy, busy downtown area. So usually oh. moving, moving, walking girls. Um, so just like walk alongside of them, comment on something, always an observation, usually an observation or, or just whatever pops in my mind. Um, never like something complimenting them or anything like that. Just something simple, obs observing something they're wearing, either their fashion, their nails, you know, um, oh. something that's on their bag, something, you know, on their phone or something uh, or something about the environment. Simple observation and talk about something that I'm doing. So I'd be like, you know, I've just. I just finished uh, getting coffee with a friend or something past tense that I'm doing, uh, figure out what she's up to. And then just basically say, you know, like, Hey, let's get a drink right now. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And depending on her reaction, depending on the time of day, either maybe like start, start walking and then be like, yeah, all right, let's get coffee or something. Then, then change, like decide later. So, um, sort of like, like shoot first, then aim basically, or, um, you know, get them moving, get the feet moving first, and then decide on where exactly it's going to be after, right? So, but for the most part, when I'm living in that area, uh, if I happen to be gaming my my neighborhood, then I'll just I'll just walk them straight home uh, with potentially a stop at the convenience store or or just directly home. Um, because there's such high traffic that like, if they if they don't want to come in for whatever reason, or if they if they freak out halfway, then I'll just let them go and, I, you know, just get another one. So, um, um. I don't, so you're, I don't really do a lot of dates or anything like that. I have in the past, but. So you're going pretty indirect and then you're just basically pulling them straight to the place. Uh, how, because in the U S the problem I would see, you know, myself encountering with that strategy is that like, there's not enough of a hook point. There's not enough sexual tension. Right. So the girl would be like, what are we even doing here? Right. Like, so how do you kind of get around that? Or is that not even like necessary? Like, where's like, I guess where's like the sexual hook point? Like when is that happening? Mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. back in the house already? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even, it's kind of weird. Like I only think of things in terms of like compliance, basically, like if they're still there, as long as I'm moving things forward in the interaction, if the girl is still there, then that's like a 10 out of 10 for me. So I'm not even thinking about really like her, you know, her mindset or whether she's hooked or not or anything like that. I'm just like uh -huh. moving the interaction forward. And if she's still there, boom, 10 out of 10. Um, and, and the rest of the things kind of filter out kind of automatically. Right. Uh -huh. um, so, and the other thing is I, I feel like it's not, uh, it's good to, to in Japan at least to not be either, either super indirect nor super direct so and what i mean by that is like i don't find the need to explain the reason for the interaction to the girl right so uh -huh. on one hand the, the super indirect would be like being like hey you know like where's the starbucks or something like Wrong. that and that to me that that just is fake right like i don't want to i don't i'm not trying to like lie and pretend i'm uh -huh. wrong. Uh -huh. and then the other side would be like hey you know the the super kind of typical hey you know i thought you were cute or something right uh super kind of straightforward and direct right and i feel like both of those approaches it it comes as if you feel the need to explain the reason why you're talking to them right? uh -huh. so i i never feel the need to provide the context of why uh -huh. i'm talking to the girl i just talk to her as if i already know her basically right uh -huh. so, so i just be like oh you know you're wearing blue today right something like that like um as if i'm literally like i've already i'm friends with her yeah. So that's basically the strategy I take when I'm out of a bar or something like that. I would never justify why I'm talking to her. But uh, I think the issue with like in America with street game is because there's so many panhandlers and people trying to sell. So if you don't explain why you're talking to her, she just thinks you're hitting her up for money or trying to sell her shit. Right. Unless you're like really good at communicating intent without saying it. So that's like, you know, like quite often in the US, if I'm just kind of taking that strategy like on the street, like I just see the girls like she's like, what do you want? Like, where's the, I'm like, nothing. I don't want to sell you anything. She's like, oh, okay. Like, and then she can relax. But sometimes yeah. like the girl's waiting for the cash because there's so many, but I'm assuming in Japan, there's not many people approaching girls on the street, like panhandling or trying to sell them shit. Right. Well, there's no pan. There's not many, there's no panhandlers, no salesmen really, but there are a lot of people approaching the street and what they are is they're, they're scouts essentially. So what that basically means is they work for nightlife industries and they're trying to place oh girls there. So, um, and I actually do a little bit of this as well, but basically like if there's a girl who's looking for, for, you know, a job or even doesn't know she's looking for something, right. The, the scouts will basically stand on the street, talk to, you know, every reasonably attractive girl that goes by and 
scout her for either porn or prostitution or a, a girl's bar or, you know, hostess club or something like that. So whatever, you know, whatever she kind of wants to do, if she needs, if she needs, if she needs work, then they'll introduce her to whatever kind of job she's looking for. Right. So, you know, I, you do run into a lot of these guys who are, who are out there and just walking around and, <clears throat> and talking to a lot of girls so they, they basically make it so that the girls are used to being approached so all oh. you have to do from your from your side of things is it's more like things you have to not do so it's like we call it like motive by negation so basically that means like if you're talking to her and you're walking alongside of her right i don't really do like full stop approaches all that much i do sometimes but usually it'll be walking and it's like motive by negation. So like the girl thinks she goes through a checklist in her mind. She's like, okay, is he a tourist? No, right. Is he a scout? Like trying to place me in a job? Um, no, right. Is he like lost or broke or something? Right. It's like, no. Okay. Uh, maybe he's just interested in me as a human being. I'll go through that mental checklist on their own by, by, by showing I'm not right. So I'll say things like, yeah, I just finished work, you know, like, so saying something, I just finished work conveys a couple of things. It conveys one you know you're not a tourist necessarily right two you're not like probably trying to scout them right you're not trying to show them a, a job because you finished your work if you're a scout you'd still be working right so that's like heavy context based stuff right okay uh, that, sense. that works that works yeah dude after this conversation i really want to move to japan and infiltrate the japanese uh porn industry and uh <laughs> all the big pity japanese girls I'll be like, that's going to be like, I think when I like hit 40 and I'm like done with the U.S., I'm just going to do that. That's going to be my goal. Yeah. Like, fuck it. Uh, okay. Because uh, I'll bang these chicks who are picking carrots or whatever the fuck they're doing. Like, I don't care. <laughs> uh, or like tickle them or whatever. Um, okay. Let, let me ask you this question. What about cities? Like, what city is the best city for game in Japan? Like, well, first of all, what city do you live in? And like, what cities do you recommend? Yeah, I'm in Tokyo. I, I think it's the best city um, in the world in the world for game. Um, obviously, I'm biased because I. Cause what about I like Kyoto, or is that one good? I heard good things. Kyoto, Kyoto is like a. It's a bit more touristy, so there's you know there's a lot of like now it's not now it's just you know there's there's a lot of schools like universities in in, in Kyoto, so that's that's oh. good. Um, I, I think uh, Tokyo, Osaka, and uh, and Fukuoka. Fukuoka is great as well. Um, it's one of my favorite cities. Uh, the, the 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 percentage of girls is like it's like sixty some percent women just in the whole city, so oh. that's just crazy to begin with. Um, plus, like it's a little bit of a smaller city, so you do have a little bit more kind of initial attraction just by being a foreigner because it's oh. not quite as played out as it is in a, in a in a big city like Tokyo or in Kyoto. It's, it's quite touristy, so um, you know they, they're just not used to as many foreigners over there um, in Fukuoka as uh, as they are in tokyo so yeah that it's 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 amazing the most beautiful girls uh in japan yeah over there for sure so but, but you prefer tokyo overall yeah tokyo overall is just like a you know it's just a big the biggest uh playing ground i guess you could say uh, some of the smaller cities are are really really good but i like you know you you kind of overfish them if you if you're if you're going really hard it's not overfish you can always have you, know, you can always feed yourself or whatever but people will start to be like oh what's that guy right mm. so tokyo is okay. great for the anonymity in the sense that you can always walk down the street and see like there's like thousands and thousands of girls that you've never even seen before right and the japanese porn industry that's mainly in tokyo i assume yeah 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 there's a lot of it in tokyo yeah okay that's where i'm gonna have to go uh <laughs> okay and then another thing i want to ask you Another thing I want to ask you about is, uh, you know, I heard that like a lot of the Japanese dudes are like super simpy in the sense that like they're like 40 and they still live with their parents. And there's like a huge virginity crisis where like a lot of these dudes are like have never even been with a girl. Like what's what's the deal on that? What's kind of been your take on that? I, I mean, yeah, I think the guys that, that smash the most in the world are maybe Japanese guys. Actually, really? not, not on average, not on average. I'm talking about like the highest, like the highest percentile. Really? in japan smash i think like uh, an insane amount yeah a lot of the guys that they game with like pull like two to three times you know a day like when they're out right and the, the japanese guys right so it's pretty crazy i see some people in the chat talking about nampa nick it's funny like it's a it's a guy that that i do that i do know he did get um i told him not to do this basically what happened he was in korea making videos about like oh i know who you're talking about 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I actually met him. Yeah, we used to like we used to hang out and game back in the day. He he started doing this. He started doing these kind of like trolly like Korean girls are easy and like putting up videos of girls and then they message him and be like, take my video down. He'd be like, no, like come find me. Right. And then while well, they did, they went and found him and they arrested him. And I mean, uh, yeah, he's a cool guy, but I did tell him not to do that. So <laughs> and, uh, obviously I I have no you know, it's like I, I don't have any uh, agenda other than, you know, trying to keep him from himself. And <laughs> he was engaged in some dangerous behavior and did catch up with him. Yeah, I heard the story David Bond told me was that basically, the, and he actually said he's going to come on my podcast some point, but basically he was just filming some infield in Korea and then he left and then one of the chicks asked him to take it down. He didn't take it down and then she falsely reported him for rape and then they uh, he ha they had fucking, what's what's it called? The uh, uh, Interpol actually tracked him down. Uh, deported him yeah. to Korea. By the time he got to Korea, the girl felt bad, so she changed her story. But he's already deported to Korea, so they need to convict him for something. So they convicted him for like invasion of privacy, and he was in like a Korean prison for like a, two years or something. That's like yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's that's basically how it went down. I mean, he was he was actively trying to poke the hornet's nest. Like he was oh, trying to he was trying to drum up media. I mean, he was kind of following David Bond's model a bit of like being controversial, and then like he would you know create a, a Facebook that pretended to be if uh, like a Korean woman and would send his own video to like media outlets be like look what this guy's doing isn't it so fucked up so he's he was trying to drum up you know a uh, controversy and get sales from that so you know fair enough if 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 he if he did end up getting bit by that but I feel bad for because I mean that's fucked up uh yeah. have you ever run into modern life dating I think he lives in Japan too yeah, 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 yeah. Jonathan, we're 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 cool. We hang out. We get you know we get dinner and everything. We we actually did a product together actually a while, a while back. The Dark Pass. So, yeah, we're we're tight. Because he says game in Japan is like super hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I I, I think people would be surprised if they're expecting it to be easy. Um, and they come over and it, and that's why it's like a lot of people say it's like Asia in Asia or it, oh Asia is easy or something, right? And I think it's. It very much depends where you are in Asia. I think Korea and Japan are Korea is even probably slightly harder than Japan. Yeah, I so. Um, so Korea and Japan are two countries which is just like totally different from from you know the more southern Asian countries. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you on that. I just can't imagine game in, game in Japan being harder than game in the U.S. Like I, I agree with you that I don't think it's as easy. And again, I'm going off secondhand experience because I've never been there, so I'll defer to your judgment on that. But uh, I just like, you know, I think, yes, Thailand and Philippines are going to be a lot easier, but I just can't imagine Japan being like more difficult than U.S. Like I just I just cannot imagine that, like based on all the Japanese girls I've ever run into. So you wouldn't say it's like harder than the U.S., would you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because like I haven't, you know, I, I graduated university and I moved over here. So my main experience in the U.S. is either foreign foreigners abroad, like American oh. girls abroad or. Uh, you know, in university. And when I was in university, I was living in a, you know, in a dorm. It was, it was, you know, beautiful university girls around me all the time. So it didn't seem hard at all. There was already that context, right? So I haven't spent a lot of time doing like things like day game in the US um, because I do live out here. So it's hard for me to fully compare and say. Um, I thought, I felt, I, I never felt like it was difficult in the US that much, right? But I, when I came to Japan, I was shocked. Like I was like, damn, this is not, easy at all right um mm -hmm. and i was expecting it to be more straightforward or more easy in in some way so uh, it's hard for me to compare fully but um i do think it 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 does tend to surprise people a little bit who are mm -hmm. expecting it to be like massively easy yeah i think though a, a good uh in my opinion again uh, is a good portion of that surprise isn't even so much because it's harder just it's different there's cultural differences uh so if you are operating on like you know american style of game where you're a bit more sexual and direct that you are gonna you know like fail a lot right but it's not so right. much because it's harder it's just because you're taking a strategy that doesn't work for that place but if you have like the right strategy uh in mindset like uh i guess because just kind of like some of the stuff you're describing i'm not saying it's impossible yes totally doable but it, it's you can have a really hard time in the u.s if you're not a fraternity and you're not like a famous person uh, to pull like two or three chicks a day from day game. Like that's really going to be fucking hard uh, versus in yeah. like other countries, like even Eastern Europe, that's totally doable. Like I remember when I was in Eastern Europe, I was pulling chicks from day game and shit like much easier. 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think because people in the U.S. are also like pretty defensive, like nowadays, and like skeptical yeah. of shit. So, right, right, right. Um, you know, you need a much like I think stronger hook sometimes. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so okay. So interesting. So going back to the Japanese guys being simpy. So you're saying that some of the like top slayers are Japanese. Uh, but what about like all the other guys? Like, because uh, yeah, there are there are quite a lot of I guess like herbaceous dudes, right? That are they're not really they don't have fangs necessarily, right? So I would say on average the dude is much more like kind of mild and herbaceous, whereas but the extremes are quite extreme. So the guys that fuck like really really fuck, right? So um, it is it is an interesting. It's like a weird like a a weird bell curve where there is like some crazy high slayers on the extreme but then like the whole the average the bulk is i, I guess they're not like quite typically alpha like they're not gonna like you know ch thump their chest or something right um japanese game is kind of much more reserved it's much more practical in some ways like uh you know there's there's not as much like kind of body contact and everything like that so it is a bit different but yeah, and, and people do have that impression that there's like, you know, a lot of virgins or whatever. And I think that 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 is true for guys. I don't think many beautiful girls are walking around yeah, unpenetrated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you what do you think? Uh, this may sound like a dumb question, but like, is there have you ever run into Yakuza in Japan? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I've had situations. Yeah. One 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 and it, it really depends what you're doing where you're at and what sort of situation you're in right so if you go to certain events i was at like i think it was like a it was like a side trance event and for whatever reason side trance tends to bring out like half hippies and half like methed out yakuza guys so oh. and they're extremely beautiful girls so obviously i'm talking to some girl and uh and yeah some 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 guy basically pulled me out of the of the club. It was like a small club. Pulled me out of the club. I was surrounded by like four other dudes, and you know I'm in the bottom of a stairwell. Had to get out, up. Like was looking up the stairwell to get out of the out of the club. Nobody's around me, and the guy is like got tats all the way up his like neck awesome. and everything. And um, yeah, he just like basically spat in my face, and I was like pissed. Obviously, he spat but, or yeah. he slapped. He spat or no, he slapped. Spat, spat in my I'll face. Yeah. and I was like furious but obviously i'm surrounded by four dudes in a, in a in the bottom of a stairwell like there's wow. nothing i can do so i'm just like yeah i was holding it back but yeah that was um that was a crazy time he was just like yeah just just leave and i was like fuck all right i'm out he was <laughs> that it's just because you talked to a girl he was with like just yeah well i was i was i i, I had I actually had bought, bought the two of them a beer earlier because uh -huh. I had lost my I lost my wallet and then I found my wallet and I happened to that for that day I had like a thousand dollars in my wallet for some reason I think I just moved out of my apartment or something I have had my security deposit still in my wallet so I wow. lost my wallet and then I found it and like when I found it you know when you lose something you think it's gone yeah, yeah, find yeah. It, you feel like elated right so I was just like buying everybody like beers I was like yo beers for these guys right and the girl obviously was fly so I was trying to talk to her a little bit. And then later on the dance floor, I saw her and she was kind of like, I, the guy wasn't around. So I was like, all right, let me, let me get her contact while he's, you know, while he's in the bathroom or whatever. Right. Guy comes up behind me, just hand on my shoulder. He's just like, come on. It's like, there's, he had his crew there too. And it was like, yeah, there was no, there's no escaping that situation. I'm glad he didn't just like knife me in the back in the club or something. So yeah. Um, but overall, like for the most part, you're not going to run into, any yaks really and the fact that there's like there's no like kind of petty gangsters like there's no like you know it's it's organized crime so for the most part they're not just trying to fuck with random people like right, right. yeah that's a good thing in a way yeah it's a good thing like nobody's gonna like if you're walking down the street nobody's gonna just like pull a gun on you or something or like a, or a knife really right you're not gonna get mugged you're not gonna get like randomly attacked or something so um, for the most part, it's like largely safe. Like there are these run-ins, but usually, like if you're getting, if you're in these kind of run-ins, it's because you're, it's because you're talking to a very specific type of girl. Uh -huh. So, I will say yeah. that the girl was worth it. So, <laughs> uh huh. Okay, that's fascinating. Uh, how did you know those guys were yakuza though? Like, or just regular fucking just thugs or whatever? So, so basically, like earlier in the night, so. After losing my wallet, I was trying to find it. So I went outside and I was, when I was outside, the guy was on the phone mm -hmm. and he had the car pulled up like a uh, nice car. 
pulled up and the other guys were just like bowing to him basically outside the club and he was like so i was like this guy is definitely not like he's not like normal he's he's a yak yeah so that's funny you, you guys have a name for them yaks the, so, so they're called yakuza yaks yeah yeah, yeah. I've, never heard, I've never heard that before interesting okay uh yeah i guess in a lot of ways there's better than like latin america where there's a lot of petty crime where for example people will just pull a knife on you just take your money and shit yeah. which personally happened to me it sounds like that doesn't really happen in japan like yeah. in order to like get into trouble you have to like really cross paths with them like you like you know you know it's not just going to happen you walking around uh, yeah. yeah which is which is a good thing um okay interesting uh what else do i want to ask you oh um I was going to say this, uh, this kind of story you were telling me remind me, I used to live in Koreatown in LA and uh, Koreatown is like Korea, like in mini Korea. And it's like legit. And I was, hang- I used to go to Korean uh, bars and clubs just because it was like closest to me. I was, remember I was hanging out in this Korean bar by myself, actually one night I was just bored and uh, I accidentally drank a drink that belonged to like these Korean dudes, dude. Like, and then like I went to the bathroom and then I was leaving and they fucking cornered me. There was like eight Ooh. of them and they were so fucking pissed that I accidentally drank their drink. And then uh, I guess I was, I'm gonna be stubborn too, because I just didn't like their attitude, because they were like, yo, you're gonna fucking buy me another drink. And I was like, no, I think not. And they were all like, and dude, like it was like the bouncer, like if the bouncer wasn't there, they would beat the shit out of me, because there was like six against one. There's like this big black bouncer who's like trying to hold all of them back. He's like, go, man, go. He's like holding all of them back. Oh my God, right, fuck it. Like, I'll get the fuck out of here. Uh, yeah. That was interesting. Uh, but yeah, like Asian guys, like again, this doesn't apply to all Asian guys, but some Asian guys mm-hmm. can be like super insecure when it's a foreigner hitting on one of their girls. Like that's just like a really sore point for them. And I think right, this ties right. back into like the porn. Why in like Asian Asian porn you don't see like white or black guys fucking Japanese girls because like they hate that shit. That's like their biggest oh, fear yeah. is like some you know white. I guess it comes down to like the dick thing. I don't know. Yeah. Some white guy or a black guy with a bigger dick is gonna come along and fuck their girls. Uh, that's i mean that 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 i I've, I've thought about that as well because the interesting thing is that like for a lot of people that fear becomes eroticized right like you have like the whole cucking cuckoldry yeah. like section yeah. of, of and it's like a fetish right and and yeah. it usually usually like a black dude right in, in, in you know at least in the u.s right and i i, I just find that fascinating right because that doesn't really exist in japan so i'm like why like you would think like if they usually if somebody has some insecurity it does manifest in some sort of erotic way at some point right so you would think that there would be like you know a whole bunch of people who have this sort of inferiority complex japanese guys that have this inferiority complex and want to see you know foreigners you know take their women or something right they actually want to see it and like er eroticize it in a way because it is their insecurity right but you actually don't see that which is which is which is strange right it is interesting but yeah korean dudes i I will say definitely get more aggressive than than Uh japanese guys they do all like they all have to they have mandatory military service too right so Uh i don't know if that has something to do with it or if they're just like more hot-headed in general but um yeah korean dudes do definitely get a bit more aggro and i have um yeah, I have noticed the same thing as like as well in clubs or in bars. There'll be a, a girl or a couple girls talking and nobody will be talking to them like, you know, and I'll go up and o- I'll open them, go up and say hi. Right. And then as soon as I go up and say hi, it, it's like I've tripped some sensor or something. Right. And all these like other Japanese guys will try to like come in. They'll be like, oh, if he's doing it, like surely we can do it. Right. They'll, they'll like sense like blood in the water oh. or you know, if you're in the club and you're, you're like getting on well with a girl and she's like getting closer to you and, and it seems like you're, you know it's, it's getting time to pull all of a sudden all these like these guys come out of the woodwork to like the, you know while they were just being wallflowers before they're like fuck that guy's actually gonna pull you know there's blood in the water like let's pounce right? mm-hmm. there is that weird effect where it's like it's a foreigner if he can do it we should be able to do it right? <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, like if you think about like the David Bond video that went viral of like him and uh, the other guy who's also named Alex, uh, like if, if that happened in America, no one would give a shit about that video. Because literally, if you think what that video is, is just a guy talking to a girl and the girl like hitting, like going home with another guy. Like there's nothing scandalous there. But because yeah. it was an Asian guy and a white guy, it was like such a fucking international controversy. But that literally largely all boils down to like, insecurity i think on like a lot of asian dudes part 
Uh, right, but I will right. say this, like, I remember back when I lived in LA, I was hooking up with this Japanese chick. I met her at H&M, actually. And pretty much everything you're describing, like, kind of happened during that interaction. Like, also, like, just super indirect observation type of opener. I was like, something, I think it was, I don't remember what it was, because like eight years ago. But I was, think I said something like, oh, I think you're the only Asian girl in this whole place. And she, like, laughed at that. And then uh, we, like, yeah. And then, like, also just walking walking back to my house without saying anything. She kind of just, like, follows me, like, like a little lost kid, I guess. And then, mm -hmm. like, we'll go home. And then she's also at the door. She's like, I don't know if I should go in. And then, like, yeah. she goes in. Uh, but I will say this. Like, it took me a few dates to close. But uh, once we had sex, she was – like her level of loyalty and commitment to me was insane. Like she, she was only here for like a vacation. So she would, she would fly back. She had to fly back to Japan, but she would come back to America like once a year. And she would like, literally like go out of her way to meet me. Like, even if she was flying to a different city, she would travel to LA, meet me. She would like, and I had to like go to work and shit. So she would just hang out at my house. She would walk two hours to go to some Japanese store so she could buy like legit miso soup. Cause I told her I like miso soup and she would like make it for me from scratch. And then like, while I would eat it, she would just sit behind and massage me. Like it was literally like that level of like commitment and like, servitude was just like insane i was like damn i can totally see why white guys want to like settle down with asian girls because like this chick was willing to like do anything for me like i feel like if i said hey i really need your liver or kidney or whatever she would have been like okay here you go like just yeah, yeah, yeah. like the word no didn't exist like she was just down like even things i didn't ask her for like she was she would do them i was like all right whatever i'll take it uh so have you kind of experienced that with like your japanese girlfriends yeah absolutely absolutely like so yeah all those kind of behaviors that, that's one of the best things about it is just like the the femininity like the yeah like you said like the servitude right it's incredible right like i have uh, most of my girls either it either they'll do it automatically or or like i'll just tell them to to it once and then they'll start doing it but like i love like when they like soak me up in the in the in the shower they're just like you know get on get on their hands and knees and be like washing my feet washing like my whole body <laughs> with soap it's like it's amazing man it feels great yeah, yeah, um, I agree. All, all that sort of stuff. Like one of one of the girls I used to date, she was like, she was like, here, all your all your clothes are here, like in this pile, like, and then she just would be like, what's your address again? And I told her, and like the next day there would be like a piece of furniture arriving to my door, and it's like, she, they they do really go out of their way to, uh, yeah, to try to please and to to you know to make sure that you're, you know, you're 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 the the king in the in the domain and that there's a lot there's a lot of merit to uh to that right yeah yeah for sure uh okay let's, let's take a few questions uh and uh let's see what people are asking uh okay let's see uh some of these we've already mentioned uh okay so how do you deal with your reputation management so yeah, so I, I kind of hinted a little bit about the anonymity, and that's the cool thing. I think that's that's like one of the big reasons that a street approach can just go happen so quickly. Um, the reputation doesn't really matter, and she knows that you can hook up. She can hook up with somebody, and it's never going to get around to her, you know, her 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 family, her friends, her work circle, or something, right? So that's one of the main advantages is, is the anonymity of of, of street game uh, or day game, right? Uh, in terms of other, like, I, I guess reputation would only really matter if you're playing in an environment where people are seeing you regularly, right? So recently, past year, past couple of years, I mean, so I, I mentioned briefly that house that we lived in, and I would say reputation mattered, but it, it actually didn't, right? It was almost like people would start show, like girls would actually start showing up and like leaving, like disappointed, like they'd be like, I thought this was a sex house, you know, right? Like, <laughs> where? Wait, I was promised sex with barbarians, right? And, with uh, barbarians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they would just, you know, they would, they would just like, if they, if they left, you know, which would happen sometimes, is there would just be like two, like girls would, you know, girls come over with three friends or something, right? There'd be just sometimes there'd just be too many girls that like they couldn't all get like proper attention or something. They'd, they'd leave like slightly irritated that like you know nothing went down, right? And so that's that's one way that reputation can actually like I thought like it was gonna go the other way, like they would be like we can't go over there, right? And there were definitely some girls like that, right? Where it did sort of start to go out, get around that there was like this house in Shibuya or something, right? But um, but yeah, 
I think reputation for the most part, like like I said, it only it only matters if you if you're playing in a domain where you know oh. there's you know people who are repeatedly seeing you, right? So after the house and kind of overlapping with the house um, project Tokyo or whatever, uh, I've been doing a lot of clubs and the club scene, specifically hip hop clubs. The club scene is pretty. Um, it's not too big for, uh, especially for hip hop clubs, which is like more, more foreign heavy. So there is like a reputation element there. So like my table is not like kind of gets to be known as like the one that has like a bunch of random Japanese girls, right. For whatever reason. Right. So there is like a little bit of reputation element there, but I don't really worry about it too much. I just like, I just let it be what it, what it is. And, 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 uh, that's a big, that's a big city. You gave me a great idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit up all my black friends and be like, yo, guys, we're going to Japan, get a house there and be like living in the big dick house. And I'll just be like the guy that just like picks up the scraps because like the girls are going to come to the big dick house and be like, oh, sorry. Uh, you know, all my black friends are sleeping, but you'll have to bang me now. <laughs> uh, do you game in Japanese or English? Um, yeah, you, basically Japanese for the most part. I mean, I, I would game in English as well, like, and I do sometimes, but um, basically for the most part, I just game in whatever language allows the most communication. So, and most of the time that's Japanese because my Japanese is quite, quite good. I've, I'm, I'm living here a long time. So, um, but yeah, but I definitely do sometimes Jap game in English and some girls want, want, want to speak in English actively. So someone says what are some more of the pull specific differences in japan things that are must in cold pool when to escalate combo topics etc um okay yeah so yeah i would say like leading and and there's some cases where they won't even say yes especially if you're if you even from day game right or the club like if you're like hey let's go let's go now let's get a drink or let's get ice cream or whatever right the girl will sometimes they'll just not even say yes they'll just be like mm, you know right and if you just sort of start walking in the direction you want to go yeah. that will, it will actually just follow you right so a lot of the like one of the kind of hookups holdups in in, men, in mental holdups yeah for guys is um they they want that verbal like yes before they start to move in a direction right um or you know before they try to take a girl into a hotel or something right uh, whereas I, I always feel like it's just better to just kind of go for what you want and start walking in that direction. And then if she really isn't down, she's just not going to follow you. Right. So that kind of goes back, back to the whole, like compliance is kind of everything uh -huh. thing I talked about a bit earlier. Yeah. I think uh, things are super important. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, in terms of when to escalate, I, I, yeah, like I said, I, I'm basically pulling directly from the street most of the time. So, um, you know, it'll be basically about, 20 minutes after meeting her um 20 to 30 minutes after meeting her usually um sometimes up to an hour and when i'll start like trying basically i'll get into isolation with her in a house in a room or something and start trying to like kind of escalate on her a bit um and yeah so it's pretty quick basically um there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of beating around the bush necessarily um uh -huh conversation topics i'd say like relatability is important so like i don't really feel like comfort i don't really feel like comfort is something you can build like people use this phrase like build comfort i feel like that doesn't even exist or it's like an illusion or some sort of fugazi or something right um comfort to me is more about like relating like understanding what the other person's life situation is and being able to like show them that you understand them and, and what their thoughts are and their internal you know psychological landscape so um in in japan a lot of the times that just comes from the fact that you know we're we're basically aliens to them um you know when they grew up chances are they, they when they were playing house or whatever as little kids chances are they weren't imagining their husband being a foreigner right they're probably imagining their husband being like a japanese guy so um and you know not having not going to a, another country and not having grown up you know with their same cult like i can't just be like oh do you remember like spongebob or something right like some like some girls will but like a lot of girls there's not that cultural foundation that you might have um it, that you would have as living growing up in the same culture you're gaming and so when you have a different cultural background you do have to the foundation of comfort essentially is relatability right so um, a lot of the girls that i like have you know have like like nails like various kinds of nails or eyelashes or something like very specific types of fashion so if i can show that i know like okay you know you probably spend maybe a hundred dollars 
you know, every time you get the nails, you probably get the nails once a month or something, right? And it's like, if I could show a, a little bit of understanding about their, you know, the way they spend their time, their effort, their energy, their money, um, that goes a long way, right? And so you can do that in English or Japanese, right? It's 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 all about showing that that you, you're able to relate to them and understand their world, basically, right? And that's that's where um, the comfort comes in. So it's not like something you do, like, you know giving your pillow or you know it's not something you can really build necessarily i think i think you bring up a very important point you're like basically you're like an insider like i do this like because i'm a big fan of colombian girls so like i've just noticed this like i know all like you know a girl from for example maybe he's called the paisa a girl from bogota's called the rola uh so like i'll ask like when i talk to colombian girls i'm like oh where are you from she'll be like oh from colombia i'll be like oh what city she'll be like oh you know from medina i'll be like oh cool you're a paisa and like like that kind of stuff like showing that kind of familiarity like makes i think a big difference uh or like when i talk to like porn chicks or only fans chick like you know i'm not just like a fanboy like i actually know like a good amount about that you know the lifestyle mm -hmm. that i think just showing that you're like you're, you're not like a complete outsider is important uh yep. so I think, yeah. yeah shout out to colombia i love i love colombia as well spent spent i don't know a few months in three months in in medellin place is great yeah how do you uh how do you feel about living in japan missing out on those big booty latinas Oh, dude, I do miss it. I definitely, definitely do miss it. Yeah. I mean, I think like Asians and Latinos are my two, my two favorites, basically. So yeah, I do. I do wish I could half, half. And I, I probably will like once, once things fully open up, Japan has been like kind of slow uh, in terms of opening country up. But once everything fully opens back up, I, I would like to spend like half my time in, in some place like Colombia and half my time in Japan. That would be basically ideal for me. Yeah, and like even though they're both like feminine, they're like so different in some ways. Like yeah. just in terms of sex, like typically speaking, Japanese girls are more just like you know. I, I at least I found like the old uh, joke that like a starfish to be somewhat true. They're more just like very like just placid versus like Latinas are like super active and like oh fuck me puppy. And then like, <laughs> uh, you know like in terms of also um, just like other things, like I've just noticed there's like some like such big differences between those two like like japanese girls are more like slender and they might have tits versus latinas have like those fat asses um yeah, yeah. uh i wish yeah. someone like, hopefully with like fucking crispr technology we can combine all the best attributes of a latina with a, all the best attributes of an asian girl and we can have this like combination of like a big booty asian latina type of creature that's gonna be epic yeah, that'd be great. There, there's a few of those. There's a few halves, uh, like half Japanese. There's, yeah, there's yeah. Quite a, quite a few of them out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the I love like the chicks who are like half, like the half Japanese yeah, yeah, girls yeah. usually like have have like like especially like the half Japanese, half black chicks. They can be really hot. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the Blasians, man, the Blasians. Yeah. Would you recommend someone to go to Japan for a trip and also game? It would be possible to pull in a few days uh yeah it absolutely would be and i definitely would recommend so one of the cool things about one of the best parts about japan um is the logistics basically you have crazy logistics anywhere you go so even if you're like let's say you want to live in i don't know for whatever reason you want to live on a farm right even if you don't have anywhere you're staying right you can pull they have these private net cafes basically which is like a a room a closed padded room with like a tv and you can rent these by the hour, basically, right? Pretty, quite reasonable. So it's like anytime you meet a girl, you can pull her into basically a private little room and, you know, a short walk from wherever you might be. Any any major station will have them. Um, there's also karaoke rooms, karaoke booths, and you can just smash in them as well. So basically, you're oh, never right. at a loss for, for the logistics for a place to fuck, right? Even if you don't have like a, a hotel or Airbnb or whatever. You can fall in the karaoke rooms? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of them are better than others. Like, so depending on the the doors, usually have like a little window, but some of them are fogged. Some of them are not fogged. So, like, depending on which which one, like, there is a camera in the room, but basically everybody's just <laughs> the guy's just jerking off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure those. Those he gets like, pissed off because he's not paying the chick. He's like, "Hurry up and fuck!" Yeah, yeah, it's like faster. <laughs> he gets in on the mic. He's just like, he's like. Man. Hand on the tits now. <laughs> change angle. Change angle. All I see is ball sack. <laughs> he's like, he's like, fuck me, this shit. All I can see is the guy's ass. He's like, he's like, he, he comes in, he just like repositions you guys. Like, okay, video. Just installs motors on the sofa to just like rotate it automatically <laughs> at the right angle. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely do recommend uh, going yeah, for a short trip. And it, it definitely is possible to pull in a few days. Um, it sort of depends like what, what your style of game is. Um, I would, you know, if you if you just come and go like just want to go hard, uh, just do a lot of a lot of street public approaches, you definitely, definitely can. And and I would say probably will. Um, if you, you know, if you go back to all these kind of things I said, um, in terms of like not being super direct, not being super sexual, walking, leading confidently, moving things towards isolation right from the beginning. Um, you don't even need a venue. You don't need to stop anywhere. Just going directly to isolation and, and starting escalating on the girl within 30 minutes to an hour. Um, yeah, you, you can and will pull and, and smash, I would say, um, obviously depending on your, your own, uh, social calibration and ability to talk to people but for the most part yeah you can and do you I ever do slide, in, slide in the dms do you ever do like any instagram game a little bit a little bit a little bit yeah um more so since i've since i've been doing the club thing a lot like these past couple months like usually if there's like mutuals or something right i will i will do some insta insta sliding some sliding in the dms but i for the most part i just I, I don't really like um spending a lot of time messaging people in general so that's another reason i don't do any dating apps and uh -huh. Uh -huh. usually my invites um from the time i was living in the house to now my invites are all just like you know let's go to the club or you know let's let's meet up let's and get i get my 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 way of doing it is i'll just like get tons of a ton of numbers and then i'll just message everybody come out on the same day right and then they all come and I'm just like, I sort of like meet them again. And I'm like, all right, which one do I actually like? Which one do I actually, of the girls who actually showed up, of the girls who are here in front of me drinking with me, which one do I actually want to try and make something happen with today or, you know, or multiple, right? So that's kind of my way of doing things rather than like texting girls to get them out one-on-one -on, -one on a date, right? Uh, I prefer to, it's almost like fishing with dynamite or something, right? <laughs> maybe I'll do a Tinder experiment where I send my Tinder profile to Japan, to like Tokyo, and just see how it does. I'd be curious. I, I might actually, that's, that's a good idea I'm giving to myself. I might do that. It could be interesting. Yeah, uh, try it out. I, th I think, I mean, for me, like online is not is not really where it's at here. But yeah, it's worth uh, it's worth testing it out. Yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel like it would be good. I'm going to try it. Uh, okay, someone says, what's your go-to club? I live in Tokyo and like One Oak, but haven't been out in a while. Yeah, man. Um, I'm at I'm at One Oak almost every uh yeah, every week. Um yeah, so I'm, I'm Mateo. Just uh yeah, feel free to use my guest list, come say hi. You know, usually have a table, usually have a few chicks, so um yeah, come say hi. Um One Oak is it is a bit small. It's like quite table heavy. There's other clubs like Sailor V as well as good. A Life just closed, which was like kind of the most, like the biggest, most foreign club as well. Um, the thing I learned about clubs is there's kind of two types, right? And like one is like the meat market style and the other is like a social club or like a music club. So at these kind of music clubs, people go and they're really, really trying to listen to the music specifically. So they don't really like like people hitting on everybody there. Um, whereas the, the meat market clubs, people just go, it's a little bit more kind of pop music and people just kind of listen for, to whatever. And it's more like meeting people. So it's good to just like, keep in mind, like which of these, which kind of club you're in as in terms of like how you're going to manage the club. So the club where I met my girlfriend, for example, is, um, the porn girl is, is, was, it was a music club, it was a techno club. So very, very, very focused on the music, right? So it's not like a club where you want to be like walking around talking to everything. I mean, you can, but you got to do a little bit more chill. Like you don't want to be like quite like super aggro, like running around, um, you know, hitting on everybody and like pulling everybody around, right? You can, but it's a little bit more, uh, it, you want to be more down, is, down stated. Is OnlyFans common in Japan? Um, it's not as common as it is in the in the West. Yeah, not not at all. So they basically, they have another thing called uh, Gravia, Gravia, which is like it's basically like bikini models. Uh. So that's pretty pretty big. There are some people who do OnlyFans type stuff, but not not anywhere near as common as it is in the U.S. I, I want to go. I want to. Okay, I think I have a game plan. I want to go to uh, Japan and uh, fucking start like a uh, OnlyFans type of thing where like white guy bangs big titty Japanese girls. And see how many big two Japanese girls I can talk into doing it. And be like, listen, this is your career is going to take off once you bang me. I got like yeah. 90, I got like ninety k on YouTube. <clears throat> Maybe I'll wait until I hit a million before I do that. Because it was like a stronger incentive. All right, someone says, "Great interview. I appreciate you with the inside. Thanks, man. Appreciate it." Uh, okay, someone asked this question, Alex. What happened to John Anthony? I, he hasn't posted a video in five days. 
like I'm not even gonna read the second part of this question. So he got a channel strike, so he's gonna be back to posting in uh two days. So yeah, channel strike. I've had one of those before, they're pretty easy to get. Uh okay. Any MILFs in Japan? I mean, I'm assuming uh yes, right? There's some yeah. Big- yeah 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 if you like milfs i mean like it's actually a great place because a lot of the like marriages milfs. yeah a lot of the marriages end up quite sexless so there's a lot of pretty horny older ladies who still look quite good because you know they got the asian genetics so oh. yeah there's, there's definitely quite a quite a quite a bunch of milfs out here oh nice okay more incentive for me uh i love sushi too so all right so there's this question he has an old video called hooking up with 100 japanese girls per year any update on that what kind of numbers is he doing we're seeing his students or friends do now yeah so i think 100 a year is is quite um if you're doing a fair like quite a bit of day game it's quite um attainable um yeah so like i think the, the the craziest year was about a year ago which um I don't know. I, I don't really keep count like of each individual one, but in terms of like the overall, like the whole year is a blur just because girls wow. were just coming in and out of the house. Um, it was insane. So in terms of, yeah, in terms of numbers, I mean, like I would say like that, like that, I made that video the first year that I, that I either the first year that just shortly after um, when I, when I started doing hundred girls a year uh-huh. and for a while it was going quite hard. And that was like, that was about the pace. This last year, I've, I've I've been a bit more chill, focused on some other things, um, you know, some some personal projects and and things like that. So I haven't been going quite as hard on just like pulling girls and smashing them and doing dates and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm sort of more right now. I'm more interested in like the quality of my relationships. So uh, I'm not not as focused on on doing high high numbers anymore. But um, it definitely is possible. I think it, you know, living in a crazy high volume place where there's a lot of anonymity and you can just approach pretty much not up you can with the great logistics everywhere it's it, it is quite possible to for you know for anybody to apply themselves and and get quite high numbers yeah do you have an idea of like what your overall body count is like ballpark yeah it's probably about like somewhere 800 maybe oh damn okay so, yeah somewhere like high high sevens or around eight yeah. So how old are you? I'm 32. Oh, okay. You're the same age as me. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Someone said, by the time Alex goes to Japan, Alex will be a dad with three kids. Hashtag open Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, we I'm need an Admiral Perry round two to show up with the gunboats and reopen Japan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think that <laughs> fun little side fact. I don't I think I'm like. I don't know, like, because of, like, TRT and shit. I don't think I can even, like, as the way my, I, like, I don't know. I've never had an accidental pregnancy, and I've, you know, hooked up with a lot of girls. So I've never once had a pregnancy scare. So I think my sperm is probably, like, low-key fucked. But I'm okay with that. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really care. I'm not trying to have kids. Uh, all right. I mean, I think we just kind of ran through all the questions. Uh, is there anything else you want to add or? Um. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I think we, yeah, I think we're, we're good um, for the most part. It's life life has been fun for the I, I i just like i've been seeing the world go crazy over over the pandemic yeah. um so i've just been enjoying i'm enjoying the fact that things were actually even crazier for me during the pandemic than nice. yeah yeah you know i was actually i was actually having a pretty good streak too uh during the pandemic i thought i banged like some of the hottest chicks i've ever banged during the pandemic there was a lot of uh you know chicks who were like you know normally wouldn't come straight to your place but everything was closed. So they were like, ah, oh, fuck it or whatever, or they would be like, okay, fine. Uh, can we just go for a walk or something? And then like, I would just go for a walk with them, pull them back to my place. So I love good. Uh, uh, oh, someone says this. Uh, okay. Let's quickly take this question. You missed this question of mine. Uh, how much of a disadvantage would you be at gaming in Japan without good Japanese? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on the girl that you happen to talk to. Um, some girls would be happy to talk like to try to talk in english or to like you know other girls are going to be either like too busy or they're not going to see like the risk reward right off the bat right so you know a lot of these girls are walking around just at a at a, at a fast pace because they're they're busy and they're they're doing things right so i would say it's mostly about just catching attention right if you're able to catch their attention um and commune and relate to them um, then there's not really that much of a barrier, right? But if it's a little bit hard to catch their attention, um, to to relate to them as well, then yeah, it can be difficult. 
in terms of how much of a, a barrier it's hard to really quantify um i would say yeah like i mean japanese definitely helps so but it's not really necessary uh, have you ever thought about a uh, complete side question uh having your uh, girlfriend like introduce you into like the japanese porn industry or is it just like impossible for like a non-asian looking guy yeah i mean i thought i've thought about it but um like it, it seems like it actually is not that like the, the pay is very very low but yeah you do get to smash nice girls pay is quite low and it's just like sounds tiring from i mean it's like a full day right and you gotta be <laughs> like you gotta get hard on demand and like i mean it oh, sounds they're great. Paying those big titty japanese chicks yeah it sounds great on paper but it's actually like quite like a feat of endurance right in reality and you, and you don't actually like you get, i mean like imagine having to like try to time when you bust yeah yeah, like, no, 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 no. it sounds yeah. quite tiring actually yeah yeah no yeah for sure man I, I am like half kidding i've interviewed a good amount of porn stars and they all say the same thing it's a job it's not as easy as it looks it's it's, it's not as fun as it looks um it has its moments that's for sure but uh yeah i feel like even myself i'll probably get tired of it after a while but i definitely would enjoy it for a few months i think that would be fun especially like all the weird like role plays they have in japan like uh yeah. like you know like all the weird shit they're into like i think i would have a good time uh like acting out those weird fantasies uh, yeah yeah the like game shows or something like yeah yeah uh but I yeah what i seen uh, one where there was like like fathers had to guess which one their daughter was by like just feeling their tits or something <laughs> right? they'd be like which one is your daughter right <laughs> crazy that's hilarious um okay so how can people uh find your channel how can people support you where should they go yeah, my channel is Attraction Japan. Um, I actually, it's been a, I don't know, I haven't been posting that much in the in the past few months. I've been like, like I said, the house thing happened, um, and then uh, yeah, like right now, just doing a lot of a lot of clubs and as well personal projects. I'm gonna get back to posting more more videos, but I have been just out here living 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 life and enjoying it. So, uh, but yeah, channel is Attraction Japan. Website is the same. And if you're ever going to come out, uh, there's, a, there's a really good book called Japan Game that I wrote with one other guy. So if you're ever going to come out here, I highly recommend it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, man. Yeah, thank you so much for coming out. I think it was a really good discussion. I think we covered a lot of interesting topics when it comes to Japan. Uh, for anyone who's not into Asian girls, sorry. <laughs> like, I guess the whole podcast. <laughs> really but at least you got to hear some good story about yaks and whatnot. So uh, at least there's that. All right, man. It's good chatting. Everybody stay tuned tomorrow. We got a dope live stream tomorrow. I'm going to be addressing uh, some of the criticism I've seen going around uh, and some of the misconceptions. Uh, I'm also going to be debating some fresh and fit fans. So it's going to be a good time as always. So it's going to be nine o'clock tomorrow. And uh, yeah, definitely check out Attraction Japan. Seems like good stuff. And uh, yeah, check out his content. Subscribe to his channel. All right, guys. Uh, till next time.